Every season of Survivor is a story, but sometimes that story can be told over the course of multiple seasons. Some players will have two part stories, while others can play four or five times and have a much longer tale. Why do some players rise and fall and never recover, while others can fall and still get back up and succeed? Well, today we're looking at the rise, fall, and redemption of Terry Dietz, who first played on season 12, Panama, AKA Exile Island. 39 days. One, survivor. Terry Dietz, a 46 year old pilot from Simsbury, Connecticut, was a castaway on Survivor's 12th season, Survivor Exile Island. By the time he finished playing, Survivor decided enough was enough we are changing the format of the show so that never again will things go down for anyone else who reaches the final three like it does for terry in this season so what happened to terry and how does his story change survivor to this day let's find out survivor exile island begins with everyone separated into four tribes a real first for survivor but the kicker is how the tribes are split by age and sex it is 16 players spread across four tribes so the younger men are on a separate tribe from the older men and the younger women are on a separate tribe from the older women. Terry being an older man of course is on Lamina with Bruce, Shane and Dan. Right away Jeff says welcome to this season's twist, Exile Island. It was a one episode twist in season 10 Palau but now this thing is fully fleshed out. One and sometimes two people will be stranded here at a time. We are currently standing on it and somewhere here is this season's idol which can be used through the final four and can be played after the votes are read basically a super immunity idol right away the four tribes are doing a challenge to get flint and machete whoever loses has to leave one of their own on exile island terry represents the older men's tribe for this challenge and he is fast and as it turns out terry back first for the older guys only two amulets remaining he finishes and first and the older men are good. Arriving at camp sees this tribe being shown as the one who has their act together the most. The younger women are drawing hearts around dead turtles. The older women have Sari who is scared of leaves and the younger men are playing baseball and meditating. The older men on the other hand. We're stoked, we're older guys and we're into this and we're doing the Boy Scout thing right now. When people come over here, if they do, they're gonna see a roaring fire and they're gonna see some shrimp on the bobby. Right away, Dan says, hey Terry, I know I can trust you and I wanna tell you a big secret. I used to be an astronaut. Terry is blown away by this and they agree to keep this a secret and be in an alliance together. Hey, I flew F-14s, <laughs> aircraft carriers. Terry's a great guy. I found out he was a military pilot, flew F-14s. At the immunity challenge, it is a close matchup, but the older men pull it off and win immunity. So that is it for the premiere of Exile Island for Terry. So far, we have learned that Terry is a kind-hearted dad who is clearly good at challenges. He is already making good with those on his tribe. And if the older men do need to go to tribe, well, I don't think he's going next. He should be safe. So let's see how things pan out. And before we start, I want to thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all of this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. The patrons picked this story to be made. So with that, let's jump into another epic story. Episode two begins and already the four tribes are being dissolved and separated into only two tribes. Terry and Danielle get the lucky draws of being tribe leaders. And with Terry's first pick, he chooses Sally. By the end of the snake draft, Lamina, Terry's tribe, looks far superior to Kasaya physically. Right away, both tribes have a reward challenge for fishing gear and Lamina blows this one out of the water. No problem. At camp, we hear from Dan about how him and Terry have a fantastic relationship that he hopes will go all the way to the end. Terry then talks to Nick and Austin and makes a deal with them to not vote them out before anyone else, anyone else being the girls. Look each other in the eye, shake hands, and say, you know, we're going to do our best to get everyone to the merge. Thanks a lot, I trust, man. You, I, I trust you. you, and I need you. We're going to do this. I trust right. you, and I need you. We're going to do this. All right. 
So the reward challenge netted them fishing gear, but the best part of that fishing gear is the spear that they won. As we saw in Pearl Islands, you don't mess with the spear. Rupert loves it. But there is no Rupert on the season, of course, so Sally decides to be the Rupert of their tribe. She goes out to fish, and when she tests it out, she loses it right away. This understandably frustrates everyone, including Terry. Then at the immunity challenge, Lamina crushes Kasaya as expected. Episode 3 begins with Terry trying to fish with lesser equipment than the spear, and Sure enough, he catches something worth eating for once. Yeah! Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hey, that's a good little fat fish. Terry, the sole provider of this tribe, came up with Nemo. And that's right, I'm talking a fish about yay big. At the reward challenge, Terry really breaks out and shows his challenge prowess for everyone to see, as his team basically targets just him with every shot to catch, and he does indeed get four out of the five points for Lumina to win, tarp, blankets, and pillows. Now, Kasaya has seen who is the strongest on Lamina with that showing of having Terry pretty much carry the tribe on his back. But Lamina does go on to lose immunity. So back at camp, they're all debating who will be a bigger detriment to the tribe down the road, Misty or Ruth Marie. One is younger and one is older, so it seems like it would be a clear cut decision, but not so fast. Upon reflection, Misty is seen as someone who actually hasn't done anything for the tribe in any challenge. And Terry says she can even outwit some of us. The plan to tribal council tonight is to vote off Misty. She's an engineer, she's smart as hell, and she could cause some trouble. At Tribal Council, it is decided that Misty needs to go, and she is voted out five to two. Misty, tribe is spoken. Second. Episode four begins with a discussion that if they can make the merge with five people, that Ruth Marie would be taken over Sally. Lamini goes on to surprisingly lose reward, and Terry gets sent to exile by Kasai in an attempt to weaken them. Jokes on Kasai though, as at Exile Island, Terry makes a game-changing move. The hidden immunity idol. Yeah, oh, totally. Break the bottle and retrieve the hidden talisman. The hell is this? Beautiful. This makes the whole trip out here worthwhile. I mean, they ended up doing me a big favor. That immunity idol in my back pocket is definitely my ace in the hole. With that super idol, he cannot be blindsided with it in his pocket because it can be played after the votes are read up until he reaches the final three. That means even at the final four, he can whip out that idol, no problem. Lamina goes on to lose immunity and they are now on a losing streak, no doubt about it. Back at camp, Ruth Marie says, thank goodness Terry's back at camp because they need him as their leader. We were absolutely thrilled to see Terry and it was very comforting to have somebody come in and just take over again, it's fabulous. Despite Terry going to exile, no one directly asks him if he found the idol, so he decides, I'm not telling anyone, I'm keeping this a secret for myself. Austin then says if they go into the merge with only four players, they are screwed. Losing that last immunity challenge was not ideal as they're now going down to five. He then tells Terry that if we go into the merge down numbers, Kasaya will target you, you're the biggest threat. We don't wanna go in four people with the merge, we're gonna get picked off on by one you first. You've got the biggest tar on your back of anybody on this whole beach. Austin is right. That lines up with what Kasaya thinks exactly. Despite what was said earlier on in the episode, discussion arises about whether to vote out Ruth Marie or Sally. And knowing how important the next immunity is, they decide to keep Sally banking on her to help them win. At Tribal Council, Austin tells Jeff that Lamina needs Terry. The best thing about having Terry around is he's a natural leader. When he was gone, the rest of us were kind of floundering. It's not like we're all inept people, but it's nice to have somebody kind of take charge and say, hey, you guys be doing this type of thing. So it's nice to have him back. Then in a four to two vote, Ruth Marie is eliminated. Ruth Marie, job spoken. With Sally being kept over Ruth Marie, let's see if that decision pays off. Episode five sees Lamina continuing their losing streak by blowing the reward challenge in a close, close race. And once again, Terry gets sent to Exile Island. Only this time, there's nothing of value there except time. Time to think and consider what he's doing in the game. He worries for Lamina while he's there. I am really concerned about my tribe mates. My worst fear for Lamina right now is they're not properly feeding themselves and keeping hydrated. 
That's my worst fear. But he doesn't have to worry about Lamina for too long as at the immunity challenge, Lamina wins, knocking Kasaya down by one more member. Episode six starts off with Sally saying as the only woman left here on Lamina, she feels on the outs and basically this has become a boys club. She says though, if these boys stick together and knock her out, they won't last as long as they think they will. Terry then says this next immunity challenge is a big one. Game seven of the World Series big. If they win, they'll go into the merge tied with Kasaya five to five. If they lose, then they are down six to four. If we win five on five, strength, strength and, and smart. smart. If we lose, Sally most likely will be gone and we're going to be hurting big time. So uh, we're totally stoked. This, this, is, this is game seven of the World Series. But it is not meant to be as Lamina does lose immunity due to Sally and Dan losing the puzzle. So I guess that gamble didn't pay off on keeping her over Ruth Marie and Kasai gets to make a big decision. Whoever they send to exile doesn't have to attend tribal council and is safe. So they pick Kasai, who's it going to be? Sally. Sally. Going to Exile Island. With Sally going to Exile, that means the easy vote is gone, so then it seems simple as to what has to happen next, though. Dan is the weakest of the men and won't draw a target away from Terry come the merge, so he is the best decision for him. At Tribal Council, Lamina salutes Dan as he is voted out 3-1. to one. Dan, trap spoken. Episode 7 is a recap episode that has no bearing on the story of Terry, so we move on to episode 8 where sure enough it is time for the merge. Terry says they're hoping this game lies in someone flipping to the Lamina side. We're down 6-4. The merge could be disastrous for us. If we don't get somebody to switch over right away, we'll just get picked off. We need to get over there and find out who exactly is aligned and who's not. Time for the merge feast, which goes well enough, and Terry feels quite welcomed by everyone. He does say that he is going to try and flip Bruce to their side since he thinks he has a good enough bond with Bruce. However, we then hear right away from Shane that the first person gone from Lamina is going to be Terry. It's hard to tell, but I think Terry does not have the immunity idol. So the next time he doesn't get immunity, he's out. We'll let Captain America take let Terry build it and we'll vote him off. Terry then talks to Bruce about flipping, and he says, hey, join us, and you'll be in the final five. Not that great of a deal, though. Credit to Terry for being honest. But why should Bruce flip to be the guaranteed bottom of a five-person alliance just so they can have a tie vote with Kasaya at Tribal Council? Terry then talks to Shane, and this goes over even worse than an inappropriate joke about how fun death is at a funeral, as Shane says, no way am I flipping. And Cerise says, uh, yeah, I'm not flipping either. This deal Terry gave me is not great. You know, I mean, obviously it's desperation, but I mean, why would we want to join your tribe, homie? It was almost laughable. It's like he's offering me something. I don't think he's in a position to offer me anything. Terry's offer to them is actually worse than what they already have with Kasaya. He would need to be promising Final 3 to really entice anyone to flip, and promise his idol would be for them all if Kasaya tried to get them out. But apparently, Terry is not willing to offer that. He does go on to win his first individual immunity challenge to save his hide. Terry wins the first individual immunity. Back at camp, Kasaya makes it blatantly obvious that they are the six in power as they hold a public meeting over who to vote out. And this annoys pretty much all of Lamina, including Terry. But Shane says, who cares what they think? They're going to be gone one after another. I don't care what they think. You know what I mean? If they have a problem with it, okay. I mean, they can have as big a problem as they want. They're, they're still going one at a time. At Tribal Council, predictably, no one flips and Nick is voted out six to four. Nick, the tribe has spoken. Episode 9 begins with some Lamina slander as Ara says that entire tribe is like snails, just slimy, especially Austin. Terry is still hopeful that he can flip two Kasai members to his side, now he has to flip more than he did before. Unfortunately for him though, despite how much they hate each other and constantly fight and bicker, the Kasai tribe are pretty loyal to each other so far. Terry then talks to Shane one on one to see if he can find out who is at the bottom of the Kasai alliance and Shane reveals us with no problem. We should put the twenty dollars on it, Shane. I found out some very important stuff. Two of their players, Danielle and Bruce, are the next on the pecking order. And if I can get those guys over to our side, this will totally swing the game. Terry decides now is as good a time as any to tell his tribe he has the idol. First he tells Sally and then Austin. Sally's like, holy crap, this news almost made me poop my pants with excitement. Terry has the individual immunity idol from Exile Island and I just about pooped my pants. 
at the immunity challenge. It is a close battle with Sally as they are neck and neck to the very end until... Sally through! That is two wins since merging. Back at camp, Terry has a crazy idea. Emphasis on crazy. He says he will give Danielle the idol to show he really wants her and Bruce to flip. Now, I am truly dumbfounded by whether this is true or not, but Terry has played an honest game so far, so I'm inclined to believe that he really will do this. So Bruce says, sure, if you can get Danielle to flip, then I'll flip too. Austin and Terry realize how stinking close they are to making this happen as they talk to Danielle and say, hey, the idol is yours if you flip. So now she knows Terry has it, not great, but kind of necessary for this move to happen. And she doesn't commit to anything, AKA she ain't saying yes. The ball's in my hand. I could actually transform this game into a whole new thing. And maybe there's gonna be somebody different going home than everybody thinks. What a roller coaster of emotions. At Tribal Council, Terry votes for R saying he is the biggest threat to him, but it is all for naught as Bruce nor Danielle flip and Austin is eliminated in a six to three vote. Austin, the tribe has spoken. Terry has now become the thorn in Kasaya's side. Everyone at this point pretty much knows Terry has the idol, though they are not 100 percent certain since none of them have held it so he is going to be hard to get out without getting the majority votes on him two times episode 10 starts with terry telling some fun tales about his time in the navy as a fighter pilot and the women not only feel jealous but inadequate as they feel that nobody can live up to terry's awesomeness how's any normal american person supposed to be the navy air fighter pilot dude maybe he'll break his arm or something <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that, I can't believe you just said that. We then see Terry talk to Shane and Aris in a moment that seems to be lacking some context as he asks out of the blue how he fits into their final six plans and they're like, Terry, you don't fit in our plans. We don't want you in the final six. Terry says, fine, then I'm just going to kick your butt at every challenge from here on out. My mindset is, I am totally motivated to kick their butts at everything that comes down the road. Kasaya then keeps dumping on Terry saying if he doesn't have the idol, he is gone at the next tribal council he is eligible at. But then at the reward challenge, Terry wins with his team to get some sandwiches and milk that is win number three. Back at camp, we learn that a surprising part of that reward was luxury items and Terry's is the American flag. And he tells us why this specific one is so important to him. Both my father-in-law and my father were Korean war vets and, uh, and they recently passed away. And this was on my father-in-law's casket. So in order to honor both my father and my father-in-law, I'm gonna hang here at uh, Hitano's for a while and uh, hopefully till day 39. Shane then says, hey Terry, prepare your butts because doom and gloom is coming your way. If you don't have the idol, you are a goner, but hey, what else is new at this point? At the immunity challenge, Terry saves his hide once again with another immunity win and boy is he excited. Terry wins yeah, immunity yeah, yeah, yeah. for the third straight time. Yeah. The numbers are still not in his and Sally's favor though, as Terry tries once again to sway Bruce by showing him the idol. He then offers Courtney and Bruce final four, a much better offer than they had before, and Courtney says, I don't know about that. At least not yet. At Tribal Council, Terry says, get used to the Terry train winning all these immunities because he is chugging along, choo choo. Danielle rolls her eyes and says, Terry, Terry, Terry. It's always about him. I'm gonna continue winning immunities whether they like it or not, and my target isn't gonna get any bigger. He always talks about how he's so competitive and he's so great at everything. It's all about Terry, Terry, Terry. As Chef points out immediately after, this is the pot calling the kettle black for Danielle. And once again, Terry votes for R saying he is still the number one threat in the game and Sally is eliminated in a six to two vote. Sally, the trap is spoken. Episode 11 has Terry saying, man, if I can just make it to the final three, I know I have this game in the back. I know I can win that final three endurance challenge. I kind of feel that once I get to the final three, I think I've got it over everybody here as far as mental power and strength. That is important, so remember it. Kasaya then fights with each other, and this has been the norm all season, but now Terry really enjoys watching it, knowing that with the idol in his pocket, the Kasaya Alliance has no choice but to turn on each other. Since he hasn't had to vote against anyone on the jury, that should work to his favor. At the reward challenge, it is a social game which has Terry eliminated first, and then when everyone gets to vote for who they cannot trust to watch their back. Who would you not trust? 
to watch your back? Correct answer is Terry. Courtney has it right. Terry then gets sent to Exile Island a third time and he tells Jeff, hey, this isn't surprising. He always expects bad things to happen to him in this game. But luck does turn to Terry's side for once as Bruce is medically evacuated from the game for being unable to poop. No joke. Episode 12 starts with Terry saying good. With Bruce gone, that is one less immunity challenge I needed to win. Bruce being gone uh, out of this game was a good thing for me because I got to skip a challenge and pretty much every immunity challenge coming down the road, I've got to take. At the reward challenge, it is a team game once again and he wins it with Danielle and Courtney. This nets him some food and gives him his fifth win since the merge, but then Jeff says, surprise, you three are now competing for a GMC Yukon. It is a simple slingshot competition and let's not mess around. This is win number six for Terry. Terry fire. Terry breaks his second tile. Yes, yes, yes. it. Terry wins the GMC Yukon. On the reward with Courtney and Danielle, he says, hey, let's be the final three. And Courtney says, sure, that seems better than my current deal. Though she has no idea that at this point, everyone's decided that they want Courtney at the final two with them, except for Suri. However, Danielle is hesitant. It's better than a flat out no, but still not great. She then asks Terry who he ideally wants in the final two. She's like, is it Courtney? And Terry tells her, actually, I'm open to really anyone in the final two, just as long as I'm in the final two. A smart answer on his part, but he tells us, yeah, of course I would love to have Courtney. He says, why not make this fair though? Let's make a deal. Whoever gets first and second in the final immunity challenge are the two who go to final travel council together. And Danielle's like, yeah, sounds good. What if we just make a pack like the first and second place finishers in the final three uh, challenge? Yeah. Why don't we just make a pack that the first and second place people go? That would be fair. Remember this, this is important. Terry then goes on to win his fourth individual immunity challenge, AKA win number seven since the merge. Terry wins his fourth straight immunity. Courtney then talks to Suri and they both say, yeah, let's get out Aris and vote with Terry, except only one of them is telling the truth and it isn't Suri. Terry says, sweet, Aris is a goner. At Tribal Council, Suri pulls off a masterful move to fool so many people as Courtney is blindsided in a three to two to one vote. Courtney, your tribe spoke. Episode 13 starts and Terry feels burnt by Danielle. She did not hold true to the deal that they made and he says she is next. The reward challenge is for the loved ones visit and of course Terry wins. This is win number eight for him since the merge began and he gets to call the shots and who gets what. Him and Shane get to have an overnight stay with Terry's wife and Shane's son. Suri gets to go back to her camp with her husband. Aris gets a hug from his mom and Danielle gets nothing but Exile Island. Now while on Exile Island, Danielle is quite mad. Maybe. This is Terry's head right now. It's all good, he'll get his. But on the reward, we learn that Terry's wife really has the hots for him. No question about it, as she says she can't wait till he shaves that beard off again and looks like a stud. Oh, I can't wait to get that beard off him and get him back to his hot looking studly self. Terry then shows her the super idol he found and at dinner, she tries talking strategy with Shane while pretending she doesn't know about the idol. And Shane's like, wow, she's playing this game harder than Terry. I didn't think that was possible. Then as the night ends, Marvin Gaye would be proud. I don't really give a crap that much about the bed. It was who I was sleeping with it was extremely wonderful. Be gentle with me. <laughs> Back at camp, Aris is mad because Terry says, seeing your wife or your child is far more important than seeing your mom, especially when you're so young and it's not like she's on the verge of death or anything. I agree with Terry, but this is not something he should have vocalized because it leads to a fight with Aris. You won your reward, congratulations. You got to be with your wife. I didn't get to be with my mom. So have a little bit of sympathy and understanding. Here I have some 24 year old kid lecturing me. My mom is my rock and she means as much to me as your wife means to you. At the immunity challenge, Terry does it again. Individual immunity win number five and win number nine since the merge. You are undefeated in individual immunity challenges. Once again, Terry is safe at tribal council. Terry is giddy. With the idol in his pocket, he is now guaranteed final three and knows that no matter what endurance challenge the season holds for him at final three, he won't give up. Shane then talks to Terry and says, Dan, Danielle is a spoiled brat, let's vote her out, and Terry says, that sounds great. At Tribal Council, Terry still votes for Aris for some reason, as Shane is eliminated in a three to one to one vote. Oh my God, I'm gonna have a chocolate ice cream bar in about one minute, I mean, one minute. Shane, the tribe has spoken. 
Episode 14 has Terry mad, and this isn't helped by Suri just dropping her torch in the pitch black on the ground. It's in such a spot where if you stepped on it, you could easily roll your ankle like that one person did back in Palau. And then they both proceed to get into a fight where really, they're just both in the wrong. Ars of course sides with Suri, and she says, oh, Terry's just Captain America. I can't see, I wasn't looking for you. Right. So I don't right. know where you want my torch to well, be. God, this so just looks I. like one of my kids, you know? Well, it's I'm like, not like dropping one of your stuff kids. in front. I'm not like one You're of your not. kids. You're not, you're not. And that's why I expected a little bit more. Then, then the, the least you could have said was, hey, I'm sorry I dropped it right I didn't right know you were right behind me. I don't have right. to say well, that. What are you talking yeah. about? We could have come back here and that's celebrated cool. our final four, but you knocked three right away. First thing you do. All right, all right. That's fine, that's fine. You know what, and you guys, Maybe I'll go to bed and you can have your little final three situation, all right? Well, here comes Captain America. You know what? If nobody talks to me for the next five days, I could give it. Uh, I'm winning a million dollars and that's all. At the reward challenge, the players need to run around and count different objects at different stations to unlock some combination locks. Along the way, Terry gets confused about the rules since Jeff was kind of vague in the beginning. And here's what Terry asked Jeff, followed by how we heard Jeff say it on TV. So you have to come back after each look once you're out there? Ours should have been back here already. He's taking multiple looks. No, Terry, you're good. I can take multiple looks? Yes. Oh, you didn't tell us that. If a lock doesn't open, it means you counted wrong. You can head back out and correct your mistakes. Somebody call a ambulance! Terry's crying on the course! Well, I had to take over your role. The feud between these two is really heating up and ours wins the reward challenge. Terry's first individual loss that wasn't the social game where he really had no chance. And this does lead to ours bickering with Terry and Terry doing his best to be the mature one, but it doesn't really work out. I got a question, Terry. Every time somebody else wins, are you going to say you got host? Is that uh, how it's going to be out here? That's the first time I lost, so there you go, ours. <laughs> Are you serious? Because right every time you, you don't win something, you complain about it. Every right time. back at you. That's you have time. no respect for anybody else out here. Keep it up. Just what keep what are you going to do? Say something bad about women? Do I have to worry about that? Oh, yeah, there you go. That always works. That's a real mature comeback. Aris takes Suri with him on reward, so Terry and Danielle have to go to Exile Island. This is Terry's fourth time here, and he says he doesn't understand why Aris attacked him when he just wanted the rules to be clarified by Jeff. But Terry says he has to choose to be the mature one in this fight. I have not made a disparaging mark against the women here. I wasn't appreciative of that, but uh, I've got to just act like a 46 year old, try to calm it down, you know, and hopefully, you know, There'll be one more immunity challenge, either myself or Danielle will win it and he'll be gone. Terry then says, hey Danielle, here's the idol, go ahead and hold it so you know it's real. Danielle then agrees to a final two deal with Terry, though it seems like more out of convenience on her part as she has burned him before. At the immunity challenge, Terry works his butt off to get immunity number six, but Aris outplays him and wins it instead. Terry then approaches Aris one on one in a mature way to say, hey, I never made any disparaging marks about women, which Aris says true, and I apologize for saying that you did. When I made that comment, I knew it was gonna get to you, but I apologize and I crossed the line that I don't wanna cross. So okay. I apologize. Okay. 100% you have not said a okay. mean thing about women. Terry handled that very maturely and it seems like now these two will just be good natured rivals instead of enemies. It is pretty much concluded though that Terry is not giving the idol up, so the vote will still be split between Danielle and Suri. Terry could take the easy way out and vote Danielle to avenge how she has burned him before, but he does not. He even trains her on how to make fire, so at Tribal Council, sure enough, Terry is safe and doesn't have to play the idol as the votes split two to two. So then it is time to make fire when all of a sudden... Survivors ready? <sighs> Begin. Finale time. Aris versus Terry versus Danielle versus Suri. Who will survive the fire making showdown and who will make it to the final tribal council to pitch why they should win? Let's find out. The fire making showdown commences as Suri takes the early lead but cannot sustain a fire while Danielle gets hers going and wins. Suri? Yeah. Tribe spoken. Back at camp, Terry is happy Danielle won since they have a final two deal. Hopefully Danielle won't disappoint him again. Danielle then tells us about the rivalry between Aris and Terry and how they constantly are trying to one up each other. I'm definitely caught in the middle between, you know, these two guys that have this testosterone, you know, match every day. Who can catch the biggest fish, the most fish? Who can beat who? Who's better? Who's the tough guy? I, you know, they just they go back and forth all the time. At the reward challenge, it is a close race, but Terry wins once again, netting his 10th victory since the merge. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Comes from behind to win reward! You are the ultimate competitor. 
Terry gets to enjoy a healthy meal along with sleeping on a cot, and the next day they do the rites of passage remembering their fallen comrades, and at the end they burn the Exile Island skull before going to the final immunity challenge. Here we go, final immunity time, but uh, this one, like in Guatemala, is not fair at all. It is not a game of who wants it the most like it should be, but more like who weighs the least as everyone bounces on platforms that are all exactly the same size that sink more under Aris and Terry than it does under Danielle. So in what is a very unfair competition where really no one has a chance but Danielle, Terry loses and Aris throws Danielle the win. Danielle wins immunity. Back at camp, can you guess what Danielle's thinking? Do you think she's gonna stay loyal to Terry like he did with her, or is she wavering? She's wavering, of course. Terry asks her what she is thinking with really no pressure on her, and she's like, I don't know, but I am a Gemini. I did not expect to be in this position, and if you had given me the hidden immunity idol, I would 100% took right, you. Right, right. Without any question, it wouldn't even be an issue right now. I'm so indecisive as it is because I'm a Gemini. Okay then. She says, if you had given me your idol at Final Four, then this wouldn't be a question right now. Yeah, okay. This is doubtful considering how Terry could have just voted her out at four, knowing he beats Saria any immunity challenge, so even I don't believe Danielle at this point. Aris then talks to Danielle and says, if you don't vote me out, then I am not voting for you to win, and neither is Sari. Danielle's like, wow, Aris is being very manipulative. At Tribal Council, Danielle stays true to what she has done all game and votes Terry out. Terry, tribe has spoken. For the journey you guys. Terry came so, so close. That final immunity challenge was not at all balanced, pun intended, and I do think if he faces Aris or Danielle at the end, his chances of winning are extremely high. He won five individual immunity challenges, had the super idol, and played a mostly straightforward game. So it's shocking to me that he wasn't brought back to play for season 16 Fans vs. Favorites, or Season 20, Heroes vs. Villains, or Season 26, Fans vs. Favorites 2, but here we are, 19 seasons later for Cambodia, second chances. The nation got to vote on who they wanted to play again and who they didn't really care for. So the question is, does Terry make the cut for this season or are we waiting for another season for him to play? Terry Dietz from Panama, he finished third back when there was only a final two dominated in challenges. Terry, Dietz, you will get a second chance. Get up on that stage. Of course Terry is in. He's a fan favorite. So now the real question is, can Terry take advantage of his return against the cast of all-star players who have also never won Survivor? Let's find out. 39 days, 20 people, one Survivor. We start off season 31 with all 20 players traveling through the beautiful scenery, countryside, and this village of Cambodia where we get to hear from 12 of them, 12 of the 20 players, and Terry doesn't make that cut. Hmm, this is especially egregious to me since we haven't heard from him in forever, whereas people like Spencer, Wentworth, Cass, and Jeremy all get to speak, but we just saw them play in the past two or three seasons, so they're still fresh in our minds. All 20 players finally meet up with Jeff, who splits them up into two tribes, with Terry being on the Blue Takeo tribe, along with Vetus. That's right, Vetus. Now, who is Vetus? Aris's brother. Yeah. However, when Jeff questions his man crush Joe about his excitement level of playing in the season, Joe says, well, I really look forward to playing with Terry Dietz since I looked up to him growing up because he was such a challenge beast. Jeff then says, okay, everyone, there are supplies on this boat to gather and whoever reaches that other boat with the bag of rice first wins and go. Madness ensues, but by the end, Wu wins to KO, the bag of rice. Upon arriving at their camp, a division becomes immediately apparent between the players who care about building the shelter and those who just want to go off and talk strategy. Terry is part of the shelter building team. And this is when Terry finally gets his first chance to speak to us about his strategy in this game. Hey, since your brother was old school, I'm gonna make you honorary old Thank school. You. It's been a long time since I've played and I believe there is a huge difference between old school and new school. One of the big differences now is the fact that the game almost immediately is played when you hit the beach. Whereas in old school, 
it was kind of like we need a shelter and we need fire. My social game over the past nine years has haunted me a bit. As we're building the shelter, I hear my wife's voice in my ear going, don't let people walk off all by themselves. You know, make sure that you're getting into the social game because, you know, it's a big part of Survivor. I'm not sure if Terry's social game was as much the issue last time or the fact that the Kasai Alliance was not going to budge at all and Lamina never had the numbers. Either way, an improved social game is not a bad thing. I'm not knocking that. I just don't think that was really the issue as much last time. We then see him talk to Spencer and... My son, he's a Survivor fanatic. He goes, you need to align with Spencer. <laughs> he's a good kid. He's solid. He's loyal. Terry's children, thank you for having your dad trust me because I don't trust anyone and I'm gonna do what's best for me. I got your back. No, I know, and, I know you're uh, solid. Definitely like, I wanna play with solid, like predictable, hey, rational that, guys. That, yeah. that means a lot to me, man, it really does. I gotta say, Terry is definitely coming across nicer here than he did last season, though this is only day one. We then see Shireen go on a warpath to vote out Vetus. She doesn't like him from his prior season, and I'm guessing from outside the game based on the way she talks about him, because she seems to be against him on a personal level and keep in mind this is only day one so where's all this personal hatred coming from more importantly is that she says Vetus is well connected to others in this game like Terry because Terry and Ars are now good friends I didn't know that so that's nice to hear I'm glad they're friends but this is doubled up on when Vetus is showing Shireen and uh, a few other ladies some yoga moves and he's just wearing underwear that emphasizes his crotch everyone's like yeah no i'm good but i think if vetus was wearing you know a pair of shorts this would come across totally different but he's either not reading the room or he is actually flirting with them unsuccessfully i might add but this is a terry video not a vetus video we also see abby maria embrace her villain persona and is seemingly causing problems day one like finding her bracelet in pg's bag but to me it feels like she's just trying to stir up drama but anyways takeo unfortunately loses immunity and at tribal council everyone either votes for vetus or abby maria and first vote vetus abby abby vetus Vetus, Abby, that's three votes Vetus, three votes Abby. Abby, Vetus, Vetus. First person voted out of Survivor second chance, Vetus. Vetus, the tribe has spoken. Time for to go. No hard feelings, you guys. Terry, Wigglesworth, Wu, and of course Vetus voted for Abby Maria. Hey, Terry outlasted Ars' brother, that's something, but he is already on the outs. Episode two sees Jeff Farner approach Terry about working together in the future, and... This game is moving like lightning, Terry, and all of these threats, I've gotta go. They can't be like names in passing, that's old school. Right. This is a new day, oh, yeah, and yeah. I do not want us to look like we don't know what we're doing. Right. I wanna vote out Spencer. Or Cherie. Those two are playing. Mm -hmm. They gotta go. If I'm going to the end with a group, I'm going with y'all. I'm not going with them. I left Tribal Council feeling like crap. But Varner is hitting the beach hard and playing the game. Survivor has changed. My second chance includes Terry Dietz obviously having to play a social game, or I will see my butt voted out. Shireen and Spencer sound good to me, just as long as it isn't Terry. Obviously. We then see Abby Maria purposely causing more chaos, which is fun as a viewer to watch. And it has to be uber frustrating for the other players out there because she's just literally interrupting conversations that people are having just to cause chaos, just to be an annoyance. No other reason. But then that night, Shireen and PG are complaining about her antics and Abby Maria, of course, if you've ever seen her play before, takes offense to this and acts like, what did I do wrong? I'm sorry for annoying you. And she sits on the beach to mope, and Terry takes advantage of this social opportunity. Abby goes off to the beach, the eight of us are in the shelter, and she's getting laughed at by her people. <laughs> and no one stood up for her. You know, she's annoying and she's an emotional train wreck, but to leave another human being out there floundering, that's just wrong. Something started to really click between me and Abby, not only personal-wise, because we made that connection, but strategic-wise, in the talking we were doing there. Maybe it's just me and it's the old school thing, but if we move on together, I got you. The opportunity sprang from just being thoughtful about somebody. Jeff lit a little fire under my ass. 
I knew I had to come to the beach here with Social Game, and I was a little slow on the uptake at first, but it's starting to come together. Terry is a hero straight up. He didn't have to do that, but he chose to, and hey, it's working out. Takeo then loses immunity. Again, I guess the extra bag of food is making no difference to their successes in this game. So we head on back to camp and everyone says, all right, it's time to knock out a big target. Abby Maria, not a big target. So we're either gonna go for Spencer or Shireen. Everyone goes to tribal council to vote and... First vote, Spencer, Spencer, Shireen, Shireen, Shireen. Three votes, Shireen. Spencer. That's three votes, Spencer. Shireen. Spencer. Second person voted out of Survivor Second Chance. Shireen. Shireen. The tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Episode three starts off with Terry feeling, oh, so good. He says, I'm on top of the world and no one on my tribe is targeting me at all what could go wrong? The answer to that question, of course, comes much sooner than he thinks, as at the reward challenge, Jeff says for the first time ever, we're doing something, uh, well, a little different. You are dropping your buffs and we're going from two tribes to three, which by the way is so dumb. The third tribe has to start from scratch while the other two tribes already have their established camps. This is That's for another time. Just know I think it's a bunch of garbage. The important thing here is Terry stays on Takeo with Wentworth and they are joined by Keith Nail, Joe, Chaos Cast and Sierra, who voted out her own mother. Terry says, uh, this is amazing. We are going to kill it at challenges now. We are stacked. Whereas Wentworth is on the opposite side and she says, this is terrible. If we go to tribal, she knows it's gonna be her or Terry out next and she will throw him under the bus if need be. However, at the immunity challenge, they crush it just like Terry predicted they would. So episode four starts off with another twist. Jeff calls this next reward a hero challenge, where each tribe gets to nominate one player to compete for the whole lot of them. The yellow tribe picks Savage, the purple tribe picks Jeremy, and surprisingly, the blue tribe, Takeo, picks Terry over Joe. Joe, who's notoriously a challenge beast, by the way. But how does this challenge go? Survivors ready. Go! 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 Gotta get the first bag and head back. Deets and Jeremy back first. Here comes Savage. Deets. Yes. Scores his first one. Deets heads back out with the KO. Everybody now looking for that second bag. Deets with the lead has his. There you go, baby. You got this. Way long. Deets big and long. Deets launches. Deets hits his second bag. He's heading out. Here comes Deets now, starting to pick up the pace, gaining on Savage. For the win, bud. Deets launches, misses, right here. Look out Jeremy. Jeremy, way long. Deets launches and scores. Takeo wins. Reward. What a boss. I know he got second place, but Terry is the oldest of these three at 55, while Jeremy is 37. Takeo goes on to win immunity, and in episode five, they win reward. Heck, they're barely getting any screen time anymore with this stack tribe dominating everything. And Terry is, of course, over the moon about this. With their fishing gear in hand, Terry goes out to catch some food. And while he's out doing that, Wentworth gathers the other four and says, hey, if we have to go to tribal, uh, Terry's the first to go and everyone's like, yeah, oh, okay, that sounds good. Of course though, I think they're just saying yes to her face because come tribal, we shall see the truth since Takeo once again wins immunity. So we start off episode six and late at night, Jeff is showing up to their camp in a boat. Terry. Hey, it's problems. I just got a phone call from your wife. And your son, Dan, he's in the hospital. Both your wife and the doctor think that it's serious enough that you should go home to be involved. No question. I'll go back, grab grab my bag, and uh, tell them. Terry. Right. Um, good luck. All right. Thanks Thank so much for everything. Good. All right. Hey, be well. Good luck. Good Kick good some luck. ass. Keep it up. Bring this home to Terry. Let's bring it home for him. It was 10 years I waited for my survivor's second chance. But when Jeff woke me up in the middle of the night, getting home to my family was the only thing I could think about. It turns out my son Danny needed a heart transplant and he got that transplant and he's doing well. And here I was thinking I was the second chance guy. 
our second chance survivor is right here. Wow, what a shame for his game. I am glad his kid is okay as that is far more important, but Terry might be the only two-time player I can honestly say deserves a third chance. Whether it happens or not, I don't know, but he is a great hero character who brings the joy and fun at all times. So what do you think about Terry Dietz? Should he be asked to play again for a third time? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.